So in the last video, we looked at planar friction. We introduced the concept of a free body diagram and also looked at some important terms like frictional force, tractive force. We looked at Newton's second law and the formula uh, involving the coefficient of friction. Now, that's all very well and good on a flat surface. However, quite often in life, there are objects resting on an inclined surface. And there's a classic problem which quite often features in A-level maths and physics, um, various sort of entry-level engineering degree courses and things of that nature, whereby you have a block sat on a plane and you tip up the plane and we want to know at what angle the plane needs to be inclined before the block will slide down the slope. So I'm going to set up a free body diagram, we'll talk it through and then we'll work through the problem. Okay, so this should look familiar by now. This is a block resting on an inclined plane and we need to put on some of our important forces. So, first of all, we don't know the angle. We're trying to find the angle of sliding. And it's common to denote that unknown angle with the Greek letter theta. I've got my block here and the block's gonna have several forces acting on it. We're gonna say that this is again a block of mass 10 kilos. And the force due to gravity always acts towards the center of the Earth. So this is gonna have a force of mg or 10 times gravity. If this was a block of six kilos, then it'd be six g. This thing is gonna try and slide down the slope. So we know already from the last video that friction always opposes motion. So if the direction of motion is gonna be this way, then it makes sense that the frictional force will be acting up the slope. What else are we missing? The resultant force. We know that this thing isn't trying to sink down through the plane, nor is it somehow floating off into space. It's at equilibrium with the plane. Now this is the thing that's slightly confusing. We saw in the last video that on a flat surface, the reaction force or the resultant force acted exactly opposite to the, um, the gravitational force. Now on an inclined plane, it's actually the angle of the plane which is keeping this thing in, uh, in equilibrium. So as such, the resultant force acts at an angle of 90 degrees to the slope and that's important and it's going to lead us to a problem next where we're going to have to resolve some of these forces and work out what angles these are going to be acting in. So we can use some of the same um, same formulae that we, we've used before but there's a couple of extra steps in these kind of problems. So let's state what we know first of all. So we're going to start by stating our formula. So friction equals mu R. We're going to use the same values as last time and we're going to observe the differences that this particular method uh, takes us to. So the friction uh, we don't know yet. Um, mu we're going to be given as 0.5 and if you're confused on how to draw that it's just a U with a long tail. And the reaction force we don't ne yet know. So we need to do a little bit of math to find these out. Okay, let's start off by resolving some of these forces. Now, this isn't gonna be a video on resolving forces, so you're just gonna to have to go with me a little bit at this point. If you're one of my students, then watch this method, and then we can talk about it in class and run through a few extra problems. So we know that the block, at the moment of sliding, just at the milli, millisecond, as this angle is, um, has increased, at the millisecond before it slides, the frictional force must be equal to this tractive force due to gravity. So there's a component of this mg force which resolves to the r direction and there's a component of the mg force which resolves um, with the fr. So to resolve a force, like I said, this isn't a video on resolving forces, so you just need to go for it for now. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by resolving in two directions. We're going to resolve to find R first. So before we find out the value of R and the value of FR, we just need to just go over quickly what resolving a force means, even if we go, don't go through the exact mechanics of it. Basically, this mg is acting downwards. However, the weight of the weights being the actual name for the gravitational force, weight 
of the block is going to make this thing slide down the slope. So it makes sense that a component, a bit of that force, a component of that force is helping the block slide down the hill. So we're going to need to resolve, find out how much of that mg force is going in this direction. And a bit of this force, a component of this force is going to be acting to give the reaction force. So by resolving the forces, that's just the posh word for how much of this mg is acting down the slope and how much of the mg is pushing the block into the slope. So let's work that out. At this stage, it's not important to know exactly why I've chosen mg cos theta and sine theta. That's for a, a higher level course than the one that my students are studying. Uh, and there's plenty of videos out there. If you're just looking for um, a way of solving inclined plane friction problems, then this method is going to be absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do now is I have a statement for the reaction force. I have a statement for the frictional force. I'm going to substitute those in to my friction equals mu r because I know that everything at the moment will be in balance. So friction. I just had to re-record this bit because um, I went off the bottom of the, uh, the video frame. Let's try again. I've got a statement here where I've got mg sine theta, that was just directly taken from there, equals mu r, so mu times r, r is given by this, mg cos theta, and I can cancel some things now. So I've got mg and mg on this side. So both of those things can go. And I've got sine theta equals mu cos theta. So I'm gonna get mu on its own, so I'm gonna make a trig identity here. I'm gonna go sine theta over cos theta, equals mu and we know that mu is given in the question as 0.5 so how on earth does this help us well it turns out there is a trig identity which means that wherever you see a sine theta over cos theta you can replace that by a tan theta again outside the scope of this video you just can so tan theta equals 0.5 that is a very simple GCSE level statement that you should be able to resolve on a scientific calculator. So to do that, we would literally go theta is equal to the inverse tan, shift and tan of 0.5. So it turns out the angle of slide and the angle at which you need to tip this thing is shift and tan 0.5, 26.5. 5, 7 degrees. So the thing will, the block will stay where it is until you hit 26.57 degrees. And at that point, it will start to move down the slope for a given friction of um, 0.5. Now, if you're looking for the shortcut as to how you solve these problems for this particular setup, there is a cheat. And it is very much a cheat because you really should understand how to do this. Um, you'll notice that all of this working this particular situation will always end up with tan theta equals the coefficient of friction. It will always work out like that. So if you're gonna cheat, then what you can simply do is the inverse tan of the coefficient of friction and you should yield the angle of slide in there. But don't tell anyone, that is a cheat. <laughs>